Hi, I'm Jan Beta, and this, as you might know because you are uh, watching my channel here, is the Commodore 1541 disk drive that is uh, the classic disk drive used with Commodore 64 and also with the uh, Commodore VIC-20. The main issue with using these today, apart from failing drive uh, mechanisms and uh, drive heads and chips in here, is using these, um, the floppy disks, which are um, double density disks and they are getting uh, harder and harder to get uh, today. Most of them start to show signs of wear and uh, the magnetic layer is degrading over time. All kinds of issues arise. These are not going to last forever. To counter that, some smart people have come up with rather smart ideas, like the SD to IEC, which is basically a microcontroller um, that is using an SD card and can connect via the IEC bus on the Commodore 64, which is the Commodore serial bus the drives connect to, and uh, it emulates some kind of storage device. So the problem with this being that the 1541 is basically another computer <laughs> in the drive that handles a lot of stuff that the Commodore 64 or the Commodore computer that is connected to it doesn't have to handle. So this um, teeny tiny <laughs> 80 mega, it's not an 80 tiny, it's an 80 mega, uh, but it's still not large enough to handle um, emulating a 1541 in full. So this thing does a very good job, especially given that it's not very expensive to build one of these or to buy one of these. Um, it does a, a great job of emulating most of the functionality when it comes to um, normal Commodore formatted disks and stuff like that works very well and I've been using this for a long long time. It doesn't work too well with fast loaders. It only works with a couple of fast loaders that are programmed in here. So it emulates how these fast loaders react rather than uh, emulating a 1541 drive reacting to the fast loader mechanism. Um, usually the fast loaders work in a way that they uh, execute code in the 1541, which this of course can't do because it's just it's just too tiny to emulate the whole processor and stuff like that of the 1541. So other smart people a bit later came up with the 1541 Ultimate. This is uh, the 1541 Ultimate 2 Plus, which is a cycle exact emulation of the 1541 drive. It emulates all the chips in there and everything should behave just like if you connected a uh, 1541, a genuine 1541 to your Commodore. Um, the problem with this, A, it has the Commodore 64 size cartridge port. It can do cartridge emulation and stuff like that, which is very, very handy. It works by using a large or rather large FPGA field programmable logic array, field programmable logic array uh, that emulates the chipset of the 1541 and a bunch of other things uh, cycle exact. So this behaves exactly like a 1541. This also emulates two 1541s at once and stuff like all fancy things that this can do. Problem being, FPGAs are very, very expensive still. So this device is expensive. Um, everything I show here is going to be linked below. So if you want one, check that out. It's definitely, it's a very, very, this is the most elegant solution for the problem around today in my opinion. So definitely recommend this. It's very, very expensive, but I think if you are using the Commodore 64 on a regular basis, this is very worth it. There's another contender that brings in the best of both worlds. It is not too expensive. It has a cycle exact emulation of the 1541 drive. It works with all the Commodore computers that can connect to 1541 floppy disk drive. So uh, may I introduce to you 
the Raspberry Pi 3B+. This thing by itself won't emulate any 1541s, but there's a smart person that came up with a rather nifty solution. So Steve White came up with something called the Pi 1541, which is a real-time cycle exec Commodore 1541 disk drive emulator that can run on a Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B+. So those models. And what this is basically is software for the Raspberry Pi. So the software does the magic in this thing. And uh, yeah, there's a wiring diagram. The software is free. And I believe it's open source too. I don't really know. Source code. It's, it's at least the source code is available. Don't know to what extent it's uh, real open source. So, and uh, to connect the Raspberry Pi to the Commodore 64 or respectively another Commodore uh, with the same serial port, you basically connect the Raspberry Pi GPIO header that's on every Raspberry Pi to a level shifter because the levels on the Raspberry Pi logic are 3.3 volts logic, which is the more modern kind. The old old school logic the Commodore 64 uses is on 5 volts, so you need a little level, level shifter of some uh, description to make the Commodore 64 see the signals from the Raspberry Pi. You also um, add a diode and some switches to um, control the functions and the software without hooking up with the screen. You also can hook up the screen with the, um, via HDMI or there's some other options too. There's also an option where you can add a little um, 7406 IC that is the same IC used in the original 1541. This adds the functionality to connect um, other uh, devices on the same bus. Yeah, there's all the information on here. I'm going to link that in below. So, and very soon, of course, with the um, open source nature of this project, people came up and made little uh, circuit boards that are basically Pi headers that uh, incorporate this schematic. And uh, I got not one, but two. Got one from Edu Arana, who also sent me uh, the Tapuino board. I'm gonna link that video in. Um, thanks for sending this. He made one that is available, or at the moment it's sold out, I think, but it's going to be available again, I guess. Um, I'm gonna link it in below on Arananet. This one came from one Dr. Andrew Armstrong, uh, better known as the back office. So um, this is a community effort rather. He made a live video where um, he and some people designed the circuit uh, on his version of the Raspberry Pi uh, head that makes the Pi 1541 software work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build both the, these kits and I am going to connect them to my Raspberry Pi and then see what they can do and what the Pi 1541 can do. If you don't enjoy seeing me soldering, you should probably skip this video now because there's going to be a lot of soldering. And then in the end, we're going to check out the functions. So I think I'm going to start with um, Edu's kit here because it was the first one I was sent. Actually, a couple of weeks ago, but I had so many projects on the list that I didn't get through to it. Oh, this is an important part, an SD card. Let's build this, I guess. Okay, level shifter, header, some switches, some LEDs, some resistors, I guess. Yep, looks pretty straightforward. Okay, so this is nicely done board. Uh, looks pretty straightforward to me. The switches go here, buzzer goes here. There's a little level shifter that's in its own little anti-static bag. Um, our six pin, IEC, or it's a DIN connector that goes here. Uh, yeah, the pin header goes here. That connects to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, then there's our little LEDs and our little uh, resistors that go here. R1, R2, and our little LEDs. So yeah, that's about it. 
it's just an adapter, more or less. So there's a way to connect to connect a little display to this too, um, but it's not included. So I am not going to do that. Uh, so okay, going to solder this together, heating up the soldering iron and uh, starting the <laughs> soldering montage. So this is probably way too small to see. Um, I don't have a macro lens really. On these surface mount LEDs, there's a little arrow or a little. Sometimes it looks like a T, with a with a pointy bit. Uh, this is in this case this direction. Uh, it's pointing at the cathode, so it's pointing at the negative uh, side. It's done. Okay, let's have a look at the Dr. A's machine. Dr. A has the best sticky tape. <laughs> oh, 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 nice. Okay, so yes, uh, these are switches that are accessible from the top. There's a little buzzer, and he added um, two. IEC sockets to connect more devices actually. Ah, here's the Pi 1541 version 3, bill of materials, green LED and red LED, nice. Capacitors, resistors, there's there's more of each in case you, you lose one or uh, mess it up. So here's the actual board. And it has a lot of resistors and some some transistors even. Yeah, I think he included the level shifter on the board. That's basically what we, what Edo did on this. The little, um, these are the little transistors and the little capacitors. Um, Andrew incorporated in the board design. So yeah, so this is the more sophisticated design you can also um, connect a LCD, it seems. Yeah, nice. Okay, and it also comes with documentation. Let's have a look. Okay, so here's the instructions. Greetings, friend. Thank you for purchasing a Pi 1541 head in either assembled or kit form. Pi is a second, second, second. That's basically the stuff I told you. Basically, it operates exactly the same manner. Assembly. If you have purchased the kit form of the Pi 1541, yes, I have or not purchased, but been given, you should follow the separate assembly appendix for the location of components. Separate assembly... Oh! Assembly appendix. This is really good. Yeah. This is a good manual to build this. And it's all color-coded. It's going to be a lot of soldering, but with documentation that good, <laughs> it's probably going to go well. Even with my uh, non-existent surface mount soldering skills. <laughs> Okay, yeah, let's get it on! Soldering montage!
all nicely assembled. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, I expected it to be much worse with the surface mount soldering actually, but it does look doesn't look all that bad. Okay, after assembling these two similar but different beasts, <laughs> I love the fact that they both chose uh, the blue PCB color. Uh, let's prepare the Raspberry Pi. So uh, what we need to do now is to pre prepare a micro SD that goes into this slot and you basically can download the image for the micro SD from the uh, Steve White's website and then it should just work. So as for the SD card, it turned out to be quite a head scratcher until I found a nice page, Mingo's Commodore page, um, which is a German blog. I uh, highly recommend this. And there's a nice little tutorial on how to set up uh, the, whole, the whole thing. And uh, there is also a little chapter on making the SD card. First off, you have to format the SD card. I'm just putting this in the computer. So it should pop up here. I already formatted that, of course. Um, you just go to Format, right-click on the SD card format. You want this to be FAT32, nothing else. You want this to be standard size. I called mine Pi1541. You want to do a quick format. Okay, everything's erased. And we're done. This is formatted now. So we need to put some files on there. The files are... You have to go to the GitHub from Raspberry Pi to make this a bootable Raspberry Pi disk card. So I'm uh, saving Firmware Master, which is linked in Mingo's page. I'm gonna link that below too to my downloads folder and I am going to I'm going to go in there on Windows you can just click there and I'm going to the boot folder in this zip archive and I need boot code bin fix up dot and the start ELF whatever that means so these are going to the SD card so I can just drag them over here and they should be on my SD card now. And I also need the file from the um, Pi1541 site, Pi1541 zip, which has the, um, which has all the files that are used by the Pi1541, the special kernel that is made by Steve. So I just copy them in the main folder on the Pi1541. So this should now look like this. But that's not enough. This is bootable, but it asks for a ROM image of a 1541. So where to get ROM images? At Zimmersnet, um, we are downloading the 1541.2 ROM because it's a good uh, ROM Mingo link that here. So let's try this one 1541.2. I'm just downloading it directly to the SD card because why not? So we have to rename this without. So we have to do it like this D1541.2. Yep, no extension. We can do the character ROM. So we're going to save this directly to the... We're going to na name this char again without file extension, char again. So that's basically what you have to put on there. Okay, so let's try if this works.
Fingers crossed. And of course, I need an IC cable to connect it, just like a normal um, floppy disk drive cable. To put the SD card in, of course. <laughs> For cut that. Okay, here's my power cable. And it lights up. And there we are. Okay. So this is the display coming from the HDMI on the Raspberry Pi. Um, there's nothing on it except for the file browsers. In theory, I can now um, switch the monitor to the Commodore 64 and then load the file browser. If you want software on there, you can put uh, disk images or program files or I think it, it handles G64 images, it handles D81 images now with the new version. Um, so we're going to, going to put something on there. But at first, I think I want to try. But now we should have access to drive 8. Yes, we do. This is the folder on the SD card, the 1541 folder. So I can now load FB64. And run it. And then I can load everything that's on there conveniently through the file browser. So uh, to use the little buzzer, we have to un comment <laughs> so remove the two slashes in the little sound section in our options txt file on the sd card um, you can also make the bus shorter and th change the frequency of the bus and um yeah basically this is sound on gpio sound on GPIO duration, sound on GPIO frequency, you just have to remove the little um, backslashes, forward slashes on there. Okay, so we should save this to the SD card. Okay, let's try this again. Now the buzzer should work and we should have some software on there. Um, so I should be able to load file browser. It's not buzzing. Insert cauldron. Ah, there we go. That's our loading. <laughs> Definitely makes some some sounds sometime. Yeah, it makes some sounds, some beep beep sounds like uh, 1,200 hertz is the normal setting. It's a bit annoying. So it, it beeps from time to time to let you know it's still loading, I guess. <laughs> Nothing like the um, 1541 Ultimate that emulates the um, drive sounds of a 1541 pretty accurately. And this thing totally works. So I'm going to put the... Um, the other, the back office version on there. It has a bit more functionality. We have to, we have to change the options file. And, uh, so, and this is on, on top of the uh, options txt file. If you're using the split line hardware option, option B, which this is, I can uncomment split IC lines here. So, save, and then let's try out the other thing. The buzzer should be active. Uh, oh, we can use the 8-bit font file here. We can comment that out because chargan font, 8-bit font file. So. so I'm putting this into X1, but it doesn't matter, I guess, because they are connected in parallel anyway, like on the real machines. Okay, so this is now connected, going to give it some juice, see if it blows up. Oh, it lights up. There's our green power LED. Okay, now I'm turning on the Commodore 64. 
and we should be able to load like before FB64 and we are okay that's more like it I'm removing the little shieldy thing here And the activity light also works. The, the red, red LED is blinking, like on the real drive. Yeah, so this is pretty, pretty nice. <laughs> the loading time without a fast loader, of course, because this is cycle exact, is the same as with uh, a real 1541, which is horrendously slow. So let's try a fast loader. Um, I have my final cartridge three lying around here. So let's put that in the Commodore 64. Let's turn this off. Let's see if we can load FB64. Okay, so the final cartridge seems to give me some problems here. So it seems to work and then it just crashes, it hangs. What's going on there? So I'm using another Commodore 64 now. No. Doesn't fix it. So the final cartridge doesn't seem to work for some reason. Maybe it's a firmware thing. People are reporting that uh, the final cartridge 3 works just fine. And I tried two different Commodore 64s and two different final cartridge cartridges actually. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, if you use FB64, the CBM file browser, that's what we tried, want to use a fast loader cartridge, Action Replay 6, um, Epic's fast load, Final Cartridge 3 to load it, then use this option to automatically mount it. So it seems we can, with the Final Cartridge 3, only, and with other fast loader cartridges, only boot or load. Um, from proper disk images, that's probably this is a, like a hybrid between the um, SD to IEC software and a true um, 1541 emulation. So um, to load stuff cycle exact, you basically have to use disk images so the, the drive can uh, do the full full emulation stuff. So I put uh, an FBD64 file which I downloaded. Uh, from the interwebs with the file browsers on there into the 1541 folder on the SD card that hopefully will give us access and make the uh, final cartridge work. Okay, now with the changed options text, I'm auto mounting the FB64 image that I um, downloaded from the Pi 1541 side. I have my final cartridge in here. And it beeps, which is probably a good sign. <laughs> so, let's see. Ah, yeah, that's better. Loading FB64. And now we should have access to everything. Okay. So now the final cartridge works, it seems. So it just, just hangs if you don't have a disk image selected. So what would come in handy, of course, is a little um, display that you can connect via the I2C bus uh, on this model here. So you can use the um, keys on the Pi 1541 head to um, skip through disk images and stuff. You can also connect a monitor to this, of course, so you can um, see what you're doing. Okay, now I have the um, Pi 1541 connected to my monitor here to show you what you can do there. So you get, so you basically have two layers of operation there. This is the um, browser. You can select uh, disk images and stuff like that. Um, and then when you turn on the Commodore 64, in this case it loads the FB64 
uh, D64 file, which it says. And yeah, there we go. There's our FBD64 file. And it also um, shows you a little track display there. You can use the buttons on the system here to select stuff. So I can uh, go into games and select. So I can just use, I can just load Bullet Dash, I guess. Loading Bullet Dash. So now I have inserted this Bullet Dash disk file into the 1541. Um, and I could switch to the other monitor the uh, Commodore 64, which I haven't connected because I'm using the same connection. So it would be would be handy to have this connected to another monitor. Um, so you could use one HDMI monitor for the Pi 1541 and the other one for the Commodore 64. So I changed the little buzzer uh, fre frequency to 500 hertz, which makes it a bit more, I don't know, it's a bit um, more accurate. So this is oil imperium. This is something that doesn't work on the SD to IEC. Uh, so let's see. Yeah. This is totally working, which is pretty cool. So if you want, I just think uh, both of them work pretty well. Um, check out the respective sides of the makers of these. I think I'm going to add a little screen sometime, maybe make another video about that. Um, fiddle a bit with the settings, but for now I'm pretty satisfied. This is working pretty well, uh, so I can use my final cartridge 3 and it speeds up things of course because this is a cycle exact emulation it should work with other um, speeders you can put other roms on here uh, you can make swap lists for the for different discs and use the little keys here to skip through them so this there's basically the same functionality as with the sd to ic but you have an accurate um, drive emulation, which makes this very, very interesting. And also it's a bit cheaper than the Ultimate 2 Plus, I guess. Um, although that one's a bit more versatile still because it has all the cartridge emulation stuff in there. Um, this is a very interesting alternative. You can hack this together yourself. You can just use a connector and build a cable and you are going to have a uh, 1541 emulation. You need a Raspberry Pi, but they're not that expensive. So this is a very nice solution for the floppy disk problem. <laughs> so let's start Turrican 2, I guess. This also has problems on the SD2 ICs, or some versions of it have. Yeah, there we are. Loading level 1-1. One, one. Okay, there we go. So anyway, uh, so much for now. There are probably going to be more videos about this device uh, in the future when I have figured out more. In the meantime, check out the web pages I linked below. Check out my other videos if you like. There's a lot more retro stuff going on. And uh, yeah, if you haven't done so, maybe subscribe to my channel. If you like this really, really much, maybe consider becoming a patron. There's going to be behind the scenes videos on there and some outtakeish stuff, some early bird stuff sometime. Um, yeah, anyway, hope to see you all again on this channel. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Wow, that's
just this storm.